typically new brass is short because it needs to be short so that it fits all chambers. And I'm talking about the headspace, not the overall length. Uh, Sammy, uh, you guys have heard of Sammy spec? A lot of people, I, I got a ton of pushback when I start, started telling people to quit neck sizing. And people were saying, well, that's stupid to full length size the brass because now you're getting it back to Sammy spec. They kept saying, you're getting it back to Sammy spec. Sammy spec is exactly what it is. It's a specification. It has a max and it has a min, minimum and maximum. If you get out, if you have a 6.5 Creedmoor and you get outside of Sammy spec, you no longer have a 6.5 Creedmoor, right? It's something else now. So you are not ever getting outside of Sammy spec. The difference is factory ammo or factory chambers People talk about how loose they are. They're not loose, they're long. The problem with Sammy spec, it's about eight thousandths of uh, variance from minimum to maximum, okay? So the factories or the, the manufacturers like Remington, Savage and all them, they go buy a reamer and they're gonna buy it on the big side so that they can regrind it a few times, resharpen it, and then it's still within spec. Whenever you get a reamer for your own rifle and a gunsmith's gonna do it, they're gonna do it on the short side. It's still within spec, because they use gold gauges and all that, right? Uh, but now you're gonna be on the low end, factory ammo's are gonna be on the long end. It's still within spec, it's just because of that variance that people say, well, factory chambers are loose. They're not, they're just long. So, because of that, more than likely, if you have a factory chamber, there's gonna be a big gap between base to shoulder on factory brass, or you know, brand new brass, as opposed to your chamber, right? Because the chamber's on the max. If you have a custom chamber, or not a custom chamber, but a, done by a gunsmith with, with a custom reamer, uh, it's more likely gonna be on the min. So that gap is gonna be different the, the, between the brass and your chamber. So, how do we find out what you have? Well, that's where a, a fire piece of brass helps. You're gonna measure that piece of brass base to shoulder, then you're gonna record that dimension. You're also gonna record it on brand new brass, just so you know what the difference is. And hopefully, once you fire your gun a few times, you will know what your rifle needs to be. For example, my 284 Shahane, 1.766. That is my base to shoulder dimension. And it's been like that for six years. That's why I know it. At some point, you're gonna just know, you don't have to memorize it, but you will know what it needs to be, okay? So you're gonna measure, and like I said, it's gonna be too big uh, or too short. So you need to fire this thing in your chamber. You can simply just go load it and fire it, and it's fine, but you are diminishing the life of the brass by doing it that way. What do I mean by that? You guys have all heard of case head separations, right? So what happens is you have, let's say a 10 thousandths short from your shoulder of your brass to the shoulder of your chamber. You chamber that round, well you have an ejector on your rifle. That's gonna push the brass in. So that puts the gap between the bolt and the back of the case. Now you have a 10 thousandths gap and it's head spacing on the shoulder. It can't go past the shoulder, okay? You close your bolt, you fire it. The brass expands, it grips the side walls. Now it's, it won't, it's not going anywhere. But at the back of the barrel, you have 125 thousandths that needs to go inside your bolt, okay? That's where the, the, the ring is so you can extract it, plus, you have tolerances between the bolt and the barrel, typically 10 thousandths, five to 10 thousandths. So now we're talking 135, and there's tolerances in that too. They can be all the way up to like 170 thousandths. So now you got some amount of case unsupported sticking out the back of the rifle. It's not grabbing the chamber walls, okay? So you fire it, the, grass, the brass grabs the walls, the back of the brass, it's unsupported, but if there's a gap between the bolt and the brass, pressure slams it against the bolt, and now 
it thinned out at the bottom. Slightly, but that's what just happened. And then you take it out and you measure it like, man, this brass grew by 10,000. Well, that's how they grow, okay? Uh, so you really don't want to do that. If you, again, if you measure your brass, you may find out that, oh man, it's only 3,000 short. Huh, it's not a big deal, right? But you need to know what it is. All right, so let's say you do have the 10,000s. Well, how do you work around that? There's two ways to do it. The easiest way, jam the bullets. Load them long to where when you close the bolt, there's some interference, the bullet is jammed in there. You're gonna have to lower your pressure or your charge for that. But that's gonna ensure that when you close your bolt, your bolt face is against the, the back of the case is against the bolt face. When you fire it, there's no, none of that stretching. That's one way. The other way, which is harder to do, is uh, you expand your necks to where you can't chamber the, right, the round anymore, and then you start sizing down the neck. You back off your die, you start sizing it down, and you're creating a false shoulder, and then you size it down enough to where when you chamber the round, it closes just a bit snug on your chamber. Now we just created a separate shoulder. The neck became part of the shoulder in a way. And now you're head spacing on that. You can do that as well. Again, this is only done if when you measure your brass, it's too short and you don't want to thin out the base. Do that, you'll be good to go. You only have to do it one time, you're done, okay? I prefer the jamming method. Just load them long, back off your charge, send it. It's the easiest way. But if you're doing a dasher, how many here are doing a dasher? There's one guy back there. And if you're doing it from 6BR brass, the dasher is 80,000 shorter than, or longer than the 6BR. So he has a 80,000th gap. He can jam the bullets, or he can do the false shoulder. That's 80,000 we're talking about now. So anyway, that's the easiest way to do it. How do you do it? Uh, load them long, put a black charge in it, you Yep, there you go, load them long. That's the easiest way. But I want you guys to know about the other way as well. Uh, okay, so now we have the brass and you're gonna fire it. And this is where you're gonna use this to practice, right? If you have a brand new barrel, you're gonna need at least 100 rounds before you start doing load workup. Load a light charge and just go practice. Go practice whatever. If you're doing PRS, start Take your sandbag and just shoot off a fan, shoot whatever. Make it uncomfortable for you. If you're doing hunting, do the same thing. Shoot off of prone, shoot off a tree, shoot off of whatever. You, you're, you're just making it, you're just practicing. Have fun, whatever. Take your kids out there, let them shoot, whatever. Just have fun with it. You're gonna, you're gonna shoot all your brass, you're gonna clean your rifle. We're gonna talk about cleaning. Oh, you believe me, we're gonna talk about cleaning. <laughs> but you get your brass fired. Now you fired it one time. Again, clean your barrel really good. And now you're gonna take out your firing pin on your bolt. Everybody shooting bolt actions here? Okay, you guys know how to take out the firing pin? Real simple. If it's not, learn. It's very easy. I'm assuming Remington 700. If you don't have a Remington 700 or a clone or anything, the Remingtons are stupid easy. But remove the firing pin. That's gonna remove the spring as well. You're gonna put your brass in there that you just fired. And you're gonna see if the bolt will close on that. It's more than likely going to close on it. No problem. Because you just shot a light load, right? Of course, you're gonna record your measurement, base your shoulder, before you do anything. You know, you have your new and now you have your ones fired. The shoulder move forward, but they don't move all the way. They don't, the, the brass doesn't size all the way on the first firing. So now you're gonna see how much gap you have now. So you chamber your round, more likely it's gonna chamber, no problem. Take it out, put a piece of scotch tape on the back, on the base of the, of the case. It's easier if you pop the primer out first. That way the primer doesn't interfere with anything. Put some scotch tape on the bottom, find a hard surface, and just roll it around like this. While you push down, 
it's going to cut the tape, going to give you this perfect circle, okay? And just peel off the excess tape, put it back in the chamber, close the bolt. If it closes without interference, you still have too much headspace. Because the tape's about two thousandths. No problem. Load it again. Now you're not going to be that far off. So now you can start working up a load with that brass. Okay? But the way you're going to size that brass is you're going to start working down your full length sizing die. Now you have your base to shoulder dimension, right? Start working down your, your, uh, your full length sizing die. Uh, bring your ram up on your press. Bring down the die until it touches and lock it down. You're going to be very close at that point. Check it. If you bump the shoulder, uh, let's say you, you, you do it like that and you, you run it and you actually bump the shoulder, back the die off so that it doesn't bump. We're trying to size the base and the neck and everything, but we're not bumping the shoulder because we're still too short. That's how you're going to size it. Next time you fire it, you're going to do the same thing again. Check a fired piece of brass, do the tape. If the bolt doesn't fully close, you're there. Okay? If, if the if fire brass won't close, you're going to need to size it, right? You're going to bump the shoulder. You said you screwed the die down until it touches. You mean feel it at the shoulder? No, no, no. Bring your ram up on your press mm -hmm. and bring your die down until it touches your shell holder. Until it touches the shell holder. And lock it down. That's going to be very close. Okay, so now you're done. So the way you do your headspace, this is how you set up your full length slicing die. Okay, now you fire it two times or three times, whatever it needs in order to fully size itself to where when you have a fire piece of brass, it'll be very snug on the chamber or it won't close at all. You record that dimension. Let's call it 1.7 for the 1.7. It won't close. Perfect. You bring it down, you check your die, you run it in, it's not bumping. Okay, fine. Take out the die, measure from your base of the die to the, to the ring. Calipers have four ways to measure. You have OD, you have ID, you have the, the depth on the back, and then you have a step measurement. On the back of the calipers, you can measure steps. Use that to measure from the base of the die to the, to the locking ring, record that dimension. Let's call that one inch, right? Loosen the, the ring, advance it, tighten it, measure again. You're looking for 0.998, right? You're trying to move it two thousandths. Once you do that, put it back in your press, run your die again or your brass in there again, see if it bumped. You're looking for it to bump two thousandths. Once it bumps, put it back in the chamber, and the bolt should close with no issues whatsoever. Okay? The problem with closing with no issues whatsoever is, or no resistance, is that whether you have two thousands of bump or a hundred thousands of shoulder bump, it feels the exact same way. So we know we have no, no interference. Now we're gonna make sure that we don't have too much shoulder bump. Do the tape again you should have a snug fit on your bolt. Now you know you're there, you're done. Okay, record that, that base to shoulder dimension, that is your head space. Do another case, because this one you bumped it a few times, it may not be set just right. Run another case through it, just make sure that everything's good, and now you're good to go. That's how you set up your brass, it's gonna bump to where you have perfectly good function, but you're not going to be sizing it too much to where you're creating case head separation. And I